Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. All right, folks, I have a video for you today that's from our Anabolics eCourse, the science of anabolics in PEDs. In this video, we're going to talk about the science of gynecomastia. Kurt Havens and I, we talk about how gyno happens, what the particular causes are of it, and we dig into details, kind of pull back why people get gyno and how you deal with it on a cycle while bodybuilding. But this is a free preview of the Anabolics course. If you want to go check out more of the Anabolics course, there is a link in the video description below. We have like two hours or so of free content up there and there's about 80 modules that go through a ton of stuff like how to cycle, the science behind each PED, uh, what the pros are using. And it's very detailed, very comprehensive. I think probably the best out there. We're going to continue to add stuff to it as we go. But I hope you enjoy this preview of the Anabolics eCourse, this section on gynecomastia. <laughs> All right, folks, Big Paul here with Kurt Havens, and we are going to talk about everybody's favorite steroid side effect, gynecomastia, otherwise known as <laughs> <laughs> Um, hear my daughter laughing in the background when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and man boobs, the moobs, the mittens. I always forget when we're, we're recording this private stuff and not <laughs> on YouTube. I can say these things. <laughs> Gynecomastia. A clinical definition, gynecomastia is defined by benign proliferation of glandular breast tissue in men. Physiological gynecomastia is common in newborns, adolescents, and older men. It is self-limited, but can be treated to minimize emotional distress and physical discomfort. Non-physiological gynecomastia may be caused by conditions such as cirrhosis, hypogonadism, renal insufficiency, use of certain medications and supplements or illicit drugs, that would be us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Or heroin, and, heroin counts. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't have to go into the rest of this, but you get the point here. So gynecomastia, Kurt, when does it generally show up in people? So there's three major stages that it's considered nor normal, and that would be right after birth, and that's generally from a mother's breast milk because of the elevated levels of estrogen and progesterone combined with the elevated levels of GH. And that will usually go away when you see it goes it's away. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's that's why it's considered normal. Then there's this stage. So we're talking specifically this occurs in men. It's breast development. Women is not the same thing. It, you also get a re in puberty, which occurs, and it's relatively common. I think it's like 60% of boys now experience some level of this. It generally, again, it can dissipate. It's, you know, correlated with extreme fluctuations in hormones. And then again, in older age. And then you see the this fourth is, one, which is like... This what, is crazy, we, Kurt. Right here, it says up to 90% of newborns yeah. have capital breast tissue. Yeah, you see it. Like if you've ever been, if have you seen your children born, if you've ever spent yeah. any time in a hospital, right, they, almost every kid has it. it but it, it's, and it's just puffy and it goes away. So the, we're probably going to touch on it more later, but there is pseudo gynomastia and there's real gynomastia. So some guys self misdiagnose or self misdiagnose themselves with this. And it's basically just fatty tissue around yeah. the chest. That's not this. This is actually like a non tumorous glandular growth. Right. And it's caused by a couple of different things. Here's some other interesting stuff. One half of adolescent males will experience gynecomastia with a typical onset of 13 to 14 years of age, an increase of estradiol con uh, concentration, lagging free testosterone production, and increased tissue sensitivity to normal levels of estrogen are the mm -hmm. causes of gynecomastia in adolescence. I yeah. had pubescent gynecomastia. It got really, really bad. Yeah, in my, I don't know, middle school? Yeah, so yeah, that right around that 13 years of age, 
to probably 16. And then I got thin as I went through high school and it went away. Okay. So you see, sorry, I was going to say, and then guess when it came back, Kurt? Oh yeah. I can guess pretty well. Probably when you Uh, use D-ball. (laughs) D-ball. It's always the D-ball. That's the only time I've ever had it as well. And Anadrol. Anadrol seems to come on really fast as well. I got it from trend too. So yeah, which we can touch on because that's more complicated. So I think also, I don't know if it shows, we can scroll down before I touch on that because it might show to show it. Okay. So the interesting thing, because mostly what we're concerned with are the hormonal causes of it, not these other things. Yeah. Like, Chronic renal insufficiency, for instance, will cause it because it's changing the way that you're dealing with androgens. Liver issues like cirrhosis is going to change the way your body deals with estrogen. So th- those still are hormonal things. They're just other cause. It's the hormone wasn't the cause. Other pathways, yeah. So what is interesting though is it's not estrogen is the major driver of it, but it also requires progesterone. Um, it requires IGF and it requires growth hormone as well. So really it it's all of those. You could technically say it requires testosterone, although testosterone itself in gynomastia is not driving it. It would be the aromatization of estrogen from testosterone that would cause it. So t- testosterone, the AR itself is not involved in this, which in breast cancer, again, this is in females in breast cancer, or I guess in the slim occurrence of breast cancer in males, the AR is activated. So that's slightly different than this situation. The basically the, um, the estrogen part causes the gland to grow. The progesterone causes the, the aviole to grow, like the blood supply around the nipple. So you really need both to be there present. And you need IGF and GH as well. When you knock out, so we've done it in mice. If you knock out any one of those things and you add the other ones, nothing occurs. Or you can get like just the capillary growth if progesterone is present without estrogen, but it won't actually cause the, the gland to grow and vice versa. So like we know that it's all four of those things. So with something like Trembolone, you probably have like a perfect storm of things going on because you were probably using GH as well. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, I oh no, the first time I had it, no, I didn't use GH. I think I've always just had high growth yeah, hormone. You level. have a natural level of IGF, and yeah, even when I was natural, my growth hormone levels I remember were in the high threes. They were yeah, crazy. so I mean, as you, it doesn't have to be supplemented, but I'm saying in a lot of bodybuilders that make it worse. I've seen guys who did not have any signs of gyno. Their body fat was probably a little bit high, and as soon as they introduced growth hormone, they get gyno, and then they blame it on the growth hormone but that's just part of the story. It's, it was really done through estrogen, but the growth hormone allowed the growth to occur. It's crazy. There are a bunch of drugs too. I didn't realize how many different Very drugs. Stuff. And we and stuff that bodybuilders use. Yeah, I mean, drugs with the anti-androgenic properties. I mean, a big one in here. I mean, marijuana. <laughs> I use this shampoo, ketocolazone shampoo. Is, it's, an, it's a dandruff shampoo, but it's used to block, specifically to block Androgen receptors in the scalp, so you don't lose your hair. If you proton, ingest it, it's bad. Proton pump inhibitors are commonly used by bodybuilders for acid reflux. Um, estri- What's that? Aldactone. Oh yeah, aldactone. Yeah, yeah. Um, used on peaking for shows. For it's a diuretic. Uh, estrogenic properties. I mean, you have anabolic steroids that um, reduce to estrogen mm-hmm. um um gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist hcg is another one that you see on here uh, alcohol um drugs that increase shbg why would that yeah. cause well if you see it in a decrease as well so the the, the funnier one is so if you increase so sex hormone binding globulin selectively binds to testosterone more firmly than it does estrogen. So, and it also binds to DHT. It basically renders DHT useless. But if you see when you, and this is why when guys want to manipulate sex hormone binding globulin, it's not really a great idea to kind of let, let your body do its own thing. I wouldn't forcefully raise or lower it with things. When you raise it, you will, you can automatically you know, you can increase estrogen that way. And when you lower it, so if someone takes something like provirin to purposely lower it, 
it, it's not that common, but what can happen is it will, because it's lowering sex hormone binding globin or Winstrol, for instance, you lower sex hormone binding globin. The first thing that gets released from that binding globulin is estrogen before testosterone. So if you are already in a state where your estrogen is not being managed, you've now freed up even more of it. So it's, if you are managing your estrogen properly, generally these things don't occur, or if you're not using a, an excessive amount of testosterone. But if you were to manipulate it either way, you'll make estrogen go up. Well, diazepam on here evidently increases SHBG and it's used by people. I mean, it's for, for use it for people. And it also is estrogenic, evidently used for people that are, have its volume. It's, it's, you know, when you have panic attacks and stuff. Um, it's interesting that, um, you know, another one that I, I've told people about that they never seem to know is marijuana. But from what I understand, marijuana increases aromatase activity, correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's, it's also, it is, it is a phytoestrogen in and of itself. You are smoking the bud, which is the ovary of the plant. Oh, well, I mean, that, I did not know that. So no, and that, and that, that always, the, that doesn't always mean that that will cause estrogen to rise. Cause something we found really recently it's kind of changed the view on breast cancer is that soy. So for a long time, when women had estrogen dependent breast cancer, they were told by their oncologist not to eat anything with soy in it. And it's actually been found that soy acts as an antagonist of the estrogen receptor. So it's not really, it is binding to it, but it's causing the opposite effect. So mm -hmm. again, I'm not giving advice as to how to treat cancer. It just an interesting, different way to look at things that we're constantly learning. So marijuana though, seems to activate the receptor. In not a positive way um yeah so i mean marijuana is a big one i see that you know you'll see a lot of potheads that are skinny and have man boobs yep yeah they they're they're like scrawny and then they have boobs uh drugs that induce hyper hyper prolactinemia i don't know that there's anything on there that we would be using um so unknown serious some of those are serious drugs for psychoactive <laughs> Unknown mechanisms. I mean, amlodipine is one. Is a blood pressure med. You'll see. Um, I'm trying to see okay. any lip Lipitor. Yep. Um, antibiotics. Mm -hmm. That was another one too. Yeah, we'll raise um, estrogen as well. And I'm not telling guys to avoid antibiotics. I mean, you're no. One of, if, if a lot of these drugs, if they're needed for medical reason, that's not a reason to. I wouldn't avoid them because of this potential. Yeah, and I'm, even with the antibiotics, you're on them for such a short period of time. Yeah, but you will see if you do. I told you, I'm not going to tell it online, but there, I've seen like acute raises in estrogen from antibiotic use short term. It's, but it's yep. not causing a harm. It's just you, you will see it. It's Prozac. It seems yeah. that um, the anti um, cholesterol, I mean, the cholesterol modulation drugs seem to seem to be in here as well. Um, a phenosteride, there, there's one that's commonly used. Yeah, I mean, all the, it seems like a bunch of statins on here. Yeah, I mean, but think about it. If anything, it's going to change cholesterol. It's going to change any cholesterol-based hormone. True. Right? Not just, we get concerned with testosterone. It's also going to change, you know, progesterone and estrogen. Effexor, that's another common anti-anxiety medication. Um, so let's talk about, I'm going to, I don't think there's really anything else in here we're concerned about. Let's talk about, um, how to deal with, well, one, treat it in, in avoid gyno. In my experience, if you're genetically predisposed to get it from PEDs, you're going to get it. There's really not a whole lot you can do about it. Yeah. There's a couple, um, I mean, there's a couple things that would make you, you know, like more prone to it so like you could either have um like an androgen deficiency you can have a, a, like an excess in aromatase enzyme which is probably what you're referring to right some guys just have more of that gene and it's more yep. prevalent where there's fattier areas of the body so it's it's not that you have that that cyp gene everywhere evenly dispersed it tends to sit with places that have more fat right like our butts like a woman's butt, her hips, her thighs will have more of that gene than, you know, let's say her stomach. Women don't tend to store a lot of fat in their stomach. Um, and the same with like men tend to get fat under their chest. That's this could be more of that gene. Some guys also have more of that. I think controlling body fat is probably the primary thing guys should do. Controlling body body fat. Um, 
dosing. knowing which dosing, which PEDs to use, you probably, if you're someone that's prone to getting gyno, you probably don't want to take things that heavily aromatize or aromatize into, you know, something like d that aromatizes into methyl estradiol. I mean, that's just a it recipe works. to to grow boobs if if yeah. you're prone to gynecomastia and damage your liver at the same time. Yeah, so it's a double whammy. But ultimately, I would say that most pro bodybuilders I talk to end up getting the gland removed, get yeah. get the surgery done at some point. Well, I think, and we've talked about this before with pro cycles, I think the, the point is, and it's same with hair loss, right? You get to a point in bodybuilding, whether it's professional or, or you know, as a hobby, that you your adrenaline load will have to increase to continue to make further progress. And when that occurs, you're going, things will happen. Right? It'd be yep. great in the fantasy world that we could all stay at 300 milligrams of testosterone and continue to grow for the rest of our lives. Unfortunately, that becomes more of a daily dose than a weekly dose at some point. And that's when things like our hair falls out and all these other things happen. So you, the other thing, I mean, the simplest thing that no one wants to do anymore is just to use an AI. If you're prone yeah. to gyno and you need to use a certain amount of testosterone, you, it's totally appropriate to manage your estrogen properly. I'm not saying crush it. It just should be managed. It doesn't need to be at 200 nanograms. Micrograms. Yeah. And I remember back in the nineties when I first started using steroids, nobody was talking about managing your estrogen. You know, and, was, in the nineties, it really wasn't an option, right? No, I mean, I, I don't think a lot of the aromatase inhibitors were even invented until the mid late nineties, if I yeah. recall correctly. And even if they were available, they weren't available to bodybuilders. Yeah. I'd never heard of anybody even using one until the late nineties, early two thousands. I think it yeah. was. So, I mean, uh, that's the, when, when I had it, we, the one time we just increased the Arimidex dose and went away. And the other time I did Letro for a day or two and that squashed it really fast as well. So that's kind of the point of these medicines. Yeah. I mean, once the test, I will say this, once yep. the tissue has formed and you have a large mass, it's not going to go away. It doesn't matter how much tamoxifen, how much letrozole you take, you're not going to get rid of it. Yeah. Now I will say this. I have, I've had the surgery done twice on one chest and three times on the other, if you could believe that. And I still have a piece that comes back on my right pec. People love to pull the gland out. Yeah, or they missed a piece of, of it. I don't know. Um, I would thought you couldn't remove, if you remove, because it's structural. Like, it's like, it basically is like the back filling in your nipple. Your nipple will collapse behind yeah, it. Yeah, the nipple will collapse, but now they have, from they what might I understand, have mesh or something they can yeah, they have a mesh that they use now, or a procedure that they use now where they can take the entire gland out yeah. that I've heard about. I will also say this, I want to talk about surgery for just a bit, and I learned my lesson the hard way on this one. If you do go get the procedure done. Don't go the cheap route and go see a general surgeon. That general surgeon may have never even seen a gyno cosmetic gyno removal case or a bodybuilder in his entire life. And they don't know how to properly take care of it, um, how to get rid of it. I had, I had it done the first time and he took it out and I had a giant divot in my chest from where he took it out. Um, and he didn't get all the gland out. It grew back anyway. And I ended up having to go back and spend a bunch of money on a reconstructed plastic surgeon to fix it. Yep. And even with with anything that's cosmetic, I would have a plastic surgeon do. So the the when you're taught how to stitch, suture a wound, a regular surgeon or a general practitioner stitches, they make an incision in a straight line or a circle and they stitch in it. Plastic surgeons use zigzags when they cut. They do things, they go, they know which direction against the yep. skin hole to do things so you don't see it. You might have a mark from the from the general surgeon that did it, right? Where a plastic yep. surgeon would be flawless. Yeah, it's Before flawless. Spending the extra couple thousand dollars is, if you're concerned with your appearance. Yeah, and the way they do it to the procedure done by plastic surgeons versus a general surgeon, the general surgeon, from what I've seen, they just go in and they rip the gland out, what they can see. Plastic surgeon goes in and they also, they take the gland out and they also liposuction the area out so everything's even. And they go in through the nipple rather than cutting through the skin below the nipple. I've seen guys with scars along yeah. their chest line. Oh, and the the general the plastic surgeon, what they do is they cut the nipple off. You can see it. 
so you can't see it. They go in through there. They remove everything through there. They sew the nipple back together. It's the same sometimes, way to do a woman's breast. Same. Okay. Sometimes they'll even tighten up the skin, which is what I had on my left. I need to go in and get my right cleaned up again at some point and have that fixed so it's even with the left. Um, people always seem to notice that. But, you know, it's so I would say if you're going to get the surgery, find somebody who's experienced. So find somebody who has worked with bodybuilders before. Make sure that they, I would ask for some before and after pictures. I would make sure that they know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And yeah. I also yeah. found out, Kurt, that not every plastic surgeon is, there's different levels of certifications. Yeah. Um, you may, you may know the different levels of certifications, but I think the guys that are certified to do reconstructive plastic surgery are the ones that you want to see. Yeah. There's yeah, there's definitely different levels. They're there's the highest that, level, like, from what I understand. Would be like basically dermatologic stuff. That's not what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. You want a certified reconstructive plastic surgeon, from what I understand. Yeah, because so they can like, basically rebuild anything from scratch. They need to, like in an accident. Yep, those are the guys. Those are the guys that you want. Yeah, it's going to cost uh, more. Again, it's your appearance. <laughs> it's your health. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, if you spend more now redoing it five times total. Oh yeah, way more. You spent the best on the best plastic surgeon in the world would have you would have saved money. Plus the years of just dealing with it, man, it can get painful too. That's another thing when it when it flares it up. It, you know, people see me grabbing my chest sometimes, like I'm having a flare up right now, just from running MPP for a few weeks. It flared flared up. Yeah. I, I shouldn't have run the MPP. But see, that's was, a prime example, right? So your your other hormones are totally fine where they were, right? Yeah, Using running tests. Test. Primo, so your estrogen was probably in line. Your test was totally fine. It's not aromatizing heavily. You're on GH. You had all the other things present, but yet there's no gyno. And as soon as you add a little bit of progesterone, all of a sudden you got it, right? It was that one missing factor. Yep. But goddamn, NPP makes me grow. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I always preferred regular deco. I don't know why. NPP makes me much more anxious. Yeah. I mean, I have that effect too, but. It does make me grow. Yeah. I, the only, like I said, the only reason I use it is in case I run into this issue. I can yank yeah. it quick. Yeah, or at least faster than DECA. That's in 14 days. The, the trend one is interesting, too, because it's a similar situation, although trend shouldn't act like that. I think the earlier days of trend use, when, there were, when guys were using the pellets and they were cooking them with the DMSO, mm -hmm. they were using, I said this in the trend video, but I think in case people are skipping to this one, I think in the early days, what was happening was they had two different ones. They had heifer and they had steer. Yep. I made As that mistake. Your own, we're buying the ones for steer because they said, well, I'm a man. I'm going to buy the, the male pellets. The estrogen. Male style. Because it wasn't clearly labeled on there. Back then it just said H and S. It was Revlar S and Revlar H. Yeah. And you'd be like, well, I'm not buying the heifer one. Meanwhile, the heifer one was the proper one. So it's possible that back then, whenever this was the, the 90s or the early 2000s, I guess guys were possibly brewing up basically hot estrogen and injecting it right into the butts oh yeah 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 dudes were we were talking about it's funny we were talking about that at the gym last night I was talking to a guy said he made that mistake learned that one the hard way it was hot what's that you do when it was hot oh no he he had the the oh the, the phenoplex with the estrogen in it yeah <laughs> so he said he grew, grew boobs after that <laughs> I, I will say this. I mean, it, on contest prep I, at the end, so there are there are things you can do to sort of, I can shrink mine up. I can't completely get rid of it, but with tamoxifen and letrozole, which I'll be honest is, you know, maxing out letrozole and using tamoxifen at the end of contest prep is a miserable experience, I think. But we got to get a job done. I think I'd be better off just getting it removed, but that is, yeah, well, that is an option. It's... Um... And we, and we, again, we've talked about this one too, but like, so guys know, don't mix Arimidex and Tamoxifen together. That's really silly. A lot of coaches like to make those two interact and they kind of make every coach <laughs> and it's, and they make it less effective. So to me, it's very silly to mix the two. You'd use one or the other or swap out the Arimidex for Letrozole if you need to get rid of the problem. Letrozole yeah. usually works pretty well on its own. I don't know if you need Tamoxifen in there too, but in your case, you, it was, you were in pain. So you got to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, or I need to look good on stage. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, there's, you know, but yeah, I saw one the other day to go up on a tangent. I I showed you that, that the scariest pre-contest cycle I've ever seen. Yeah. It was Arimidex, Aromacin, Letrozole, 
tamoxifen, and halotestin. That was the whole cycle. That's insane, There's man. Four AIs basically, or four anti-estrogen medicines, and one severely androgenic oral. Some of the I'm going to show a picture here. I want to see, get a picture of up some of the some of the gland tissue that people pull out. It's it's absolutely fucking insane. I couldn't believe I was awake when I had my last one really? done. Yeah, I wanted to see it. <laughs> I'm, I'm weird like that. But the amount of tissue that they pull out is fucking crazy sometimes. Um, this is, you know, so I'm going to give you guys a trigger warning, but check this shit out. Look, this is not me. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's I all. Mean, the yellow's all fat. Yeah, the yellow is fat. The white's the gland tissue, right? Mm -hmm. And the red is just capillaries. And I mean, you can. That guy had some pretty bad breast growth if he had that much fat in there. That's a lot of fat. Yeah. I would I would think that a, most bodybuilders are not going to, you're not going to see that kind of fat in a bodybuilder usually. Right? Yours didn't look anything like that. I mean, look at this. This is all like gland tissue right here. I mean, there is some fat on it. But it's, let me see if I can find any bodybuilder ones. I don't know. I've seen some crazy shit come out of bodybuilders, dude. Um, I mean, you can see sometimes like people will get it on one side too like i had it really bad on just one side and not on the other yeah i don't think they have any before and afters of of bodybuilders but it's um there's some crazy ones man wow i mean you gotta you gotta find a good surgeon though i'll, I'll say that because i've seen some fucked up results from gyno surgery I had a guy get all angry with me, sending me an email telling me that is this is this guy? See, he put the cut below the breast. Yeah, it wouldn't. that's what I'm talking about. That's not that's not how you want it. That's how they used to do. Bad surgeons would do women's breast augmentations like that too, and then you have a scar under there. Yeah, and you can see here. This is the proper way. See how they cut yeah. the bottom of the nipple? They literally. I've even seen where they take the nipple, like in, in women, they actually take the nipple completely off. Oh, that's what they did on me because I had a giant chunk. Yeah, because yeah, they, they got to stick a bag in a woman and then inflate it. Yeah, they they took my nipple off and then put it back on. It was, it was pretty you didn't You weren't watching, though. There was a blind, though, right? Uh, yeah, he put the blind on when he did that. The surgeons uh, were sort of friends. Holy shit. Look at this one. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That is a lot. What? I mean, these guys probably had it just. I mean, you can see in some of these pictures that these look like women. Yeah. I mean, they were born that so way. Bad. I mean, that's you, you can see like, look how puffy and inflamed. The nipple. That's another thing. Symptoms. I didn't think we we touched on that, but quickly touching on that, you're going to have itchy nipples. Yeah. Oh, it hurts. You. There's no mistake. Hurts. When guys are questioning if they have gyno, you know, like you said, it hurts. When I got it from um, D ball or Anadrol the one time, it woke me up. I rolled over onto my side, and I I must have laid on it, and it woke me up. It hurts so badly. Well, I would say, folks, if you're serious about bodybuilding and you're prone to gyno, I would just plunk down the money and get the surgery done. Yeah, make sure you get a good surgeon if you're if you want to be. A, I, I I I mean, we talked to quite a bit of pros. I would say almost. I would all not all, but I would say probably like ninety percent of the pros I talked to have had the surgery done. Yeah, because you're going to want to run the high amounts at some point. Yeah, I mean, what, and we've talked about it before, they, they're they're using gram quantity of this stuff. I mean, they're everything. using shit, everything. Shit, shit tons of it. I have a, if you guys are curious, I have a full video up on the YouTube channel, Anabolic Bodybuilding YouTube channel, about my gyno surgery. Oh, do you? I never saw that one. Yeah, I put it, I redid it recently and put it back up. Some people were asking about it. So if you went to watch, watch it, I have, and I even have pictures of showing you what it looked like before and after um so and i also had a mini tummy tuck done which honestly that's a whole other story i wish i'd never fucking did that one that was awful um but you can go check that out if you want to hear about my experience with gyno surgery all right kurt anything to add to this 
No, I think it's, it's unfortunately, it's bound to happen to a lot of people, right? It's fairly common for us. And you're a lucky uh, bastard. You've never had to have the surgery. No, I, I got rid of it. I, you know, I always had that kind of stuff on me. So I got rid of it before it ever got to a point where it grew. Yeah. Usually super lean guys. I, like you're a pretty lean guy. I don't see it. My estrogen was, I wish I did labs. My estrogen was probably real high at that point. I was using, again, it's, I feel like D-ball is always the cause. It was D-ball, DECA, and test with no AI. It's like 900 test, 600 DECA, and 50 milligrams of D-ball a day. And it's that lasted... Like that lasted like a week before I had gyno. That Deca Debo combination seems like it's just a dangerous. recipe for growing boobs. Yeah, I wonder. On a parting note, I wonder how many guys in the seventies, when that was like the common thing to run, how many guys we never saw because they never became famous that got really horrible side effects like that. For like the ten yeah. golden era guys that we know, there were probably a hundred guys of golds that got horrible side effects. I've talked never about this a million times. Um, and this is the last little bit of parting words and something that Dr. Mike Israel told, told me about. And I just has stuck with me ever since it's the survivorship bias yep. and how people have a bias for those that have succeeded. And it's more important to look at the, the, not the, not the 10 that made it, but look at the 90 that failed and why doing the exact same thing. So you are hundred percent right. There was no way to manage estrogen back then other than I, I posted a video up yesterday about dorian yates talking about cycles and he talked about how he managed estrogen was to just take anivar and primo <laughs> the best he could right i mean he was he was not wrong right you know he seemed to have a clear rudimentary understand. understanding of the drugs but he just talked about them as being non-estrogen steroids and his d-ball and deca being estrogen steroids yeah I mean, and that's the thing where, with all of us. I mean, the limiting factor for most guys is it, it would, outside of just straight genetics to have that ability to to achieve that size is probably your tolerance for your tolerance and your response to drugs. Tolerance right? like and, yep. and response. So when guys are a Dorian Yates, not only has a higher tolerance than most people, regardless of what he said, his dose, I'm not going to judge his dosing he could tolerate doses that a lot of guys couldn't tolerate without side effects and he had a response to them right like you and i both know people that can take a gram of gear and get almost nothing out of it there's kids in every commercial gym around the nation yep. who run all sorts of stuff that don't look like anything yep. it's the guys like a kevin mavroni or dorian yates you know when or lee priest when they started out in the first, they literally started on 400 milligrams and they blew up yeah that's what's going to determine your success in this sport it's yeah it's and the, it's the thousand other guys that have a heart problem after it or lose all their, like every, just things just go wrong when they use stuff. I mean, talking about the genetic thing again, just like you said, back in the seventies, just the ability to take DECA and D-ball and not get gyno from it because there was, yeah. there were as genetic. far as I know, there was no surgical intervention then. No, there was nothing. The doctors, the doctors didn't know anything about that. They weren't going to touch that. Yeah. No, I so, mean, that, that's bodybuilding. It is you, all a genetic sport. You grew man people. boobs. You were, <laughs> yeah, and that's a, and again with with that. I mean, when we look at examples of things, and we, we use these guys as examples, whether you like these guys or not, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mike Menzer and Frank Zane and all these guys, regardless of your personal opinion, they had the best genetics in the world at the time that were exposed. To that and stuff. that's why you don't do what they do. Yeah, that, because it doesn't matter. I, I said that matter. on Saturday on the podcast about that. Yeah, it's you can't use these one-off guys of what they do. It does not matter. All right, folks, that's all we got for you on this one. Thank you for watching. All right, folks, I want to take a quick break from this episode to tell you about the new e-course that Kurt Havens and I have put together, The Scientific Principles of Anabolics and PEDs. This is the most comprehensive PED e-course ever put together with over 80 modules, including intros to PEDs, major steroid profiles, competitor off-season cycles, non-competitor cycles, contest prep cycles, HGH fundamentals, insulin fundamentals, side effect management, safer use concepts, fat loss agents, estrogen management, and advanced PED and hypertrophy science. It is the best course out there of its kind. Go check it out. Link is in the video description below.